All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm your humble host, Taylor Coleman, uh, CEO, lead writer, director, and producer at Crystal Ignition LLC. Today, we're going to be talking about five filmmaking tools that we regret buying at the studio. Um, and yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead on and roll the intro. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you have not done so already, please like, share, and subscribe. And today we're gonna to be talking about five filmmaking tools that we regret purchasing at the studio. So starting off with number five, uh, is it gonna be a camera bag? Um, to be specific, the Neewear camera bag. Now, let me make myself clear. I don't wanna throw shade at any company or tell you not to go buy anything from them. That's not what we're doing. Um, we're just kind of talking about five tools that uh, haven't really worked out at the studio. Things that I've purchased or purchased a long time ago that have now just kind of become obsolete. So I'm letting you all know so that when you go out, if you're a beginner filmmaker and you're purchasing new gear for the first time, um, you can kind of think ahead if that makes any sense. So that way when your company or your films start to get bigger, uh, you don't have to go back and purchase more things. You can spend your money wisely the first time. So um, yeah, number five is going to be a camera bag. Um, now we have the Neewear camera bag, as I said, and I'm going to put it somewhere like right here or something. And it only has like three compartments and then like a top compartment. And I have a, a fully rigged out um, rig. Uh, we have two almost at this point and a bunch of other stuff. and. You know, it's good to keep like filters, like indie filters, um, uh, extra lenses. But as we've invested, like, you know, uh, this is being shot on a Cerui 50 millimeter lens. That's not, <laughs> that's not very cheap, you know, and I don't want to put that in a bag like that. Um, we have a Pelican case, and then we also have another Pelican case for the uh, spherical lenses from Miticon. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're gonna buy a camera bag, try to buy a bigger one, like uh, one that has more compartments, maybe something that's kind of the size of like a briefcase, if you can find one. Um, and, and yeah, just try to plan ahead like that and buy something that has lots of padding, lots of cushioning. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the Pelican case unless it's something that you can like pick up. Because if you're on the go, running gun, you know, you, you want it to be big enough that you can hold a lot of stuff in there, but also small enough that you can uh, move around, move quickly, and also has enough padding to protect your gear. Uh, so that's going to be number five. Number four on the list. Number four is going to be a mat box. So um, you, obviously you guys can't see this, and I'll put a picture up right here again, but um, this, this rig that I'm using, the G85, has the original small rig mat box. Now it's not a bad mat box. When it first came out, um, very you know it's affordable very good for indie filmmakers but now they've made like two or three more i think they have a new one that's out um from what i gather it's also a little bit cheaper there are other parts you can put on it like you can put other flags on there um and it also comes with step up rings um so i had to actually go out and purchase step up rings to use with the lenses that we have here at crystal ignition um so that was extra money spent and you know it's kind of disappointing when they come out with a new version of the map box and it comes with those step up rings so don't purchase that if you're in the market for a map box buy one of the newer ones do not buy the original one and i'm going to try and put the code like right here um, for the newer one so that way you know which one to buy um, again small rig great company but don't buy this product because they have new better ones i wouldn't recommend it um, so number three on the list is going to be a tripod. Now, I, I've been saying this a lot in the video, you can't see it, but 
uh, where I'm actually using this tripod right now to record this video. It's the Neewear, I believe, 61 inch professional tripod. And I picked this guy up from Amazon. It served me really well. Um, I've taken it out all kinds of places. I've taken it to beaches. I've taken it to forests. Um, I've brought it to school with me. Um, it's a really good tripod. The problem with it is at the bottom there's this bar and it's actually locked in place. You can't remove it. So if you want to do like those really low level shots, uh, like, like a hi-hat type shop, um, I actually had to go out and I had to buy um, a plate so that I can do that. Um, this tripod is just not really good for that. I'd say this one is more for like studio setups. So be conscious when you're out buying a tripod and try to buy one with like those extendable legs so that way you have more versatility when you're out filmmaking and I think that's very important for indie filmmakers that don't have money to say oh you know I'll buy this tripod for when I'm at home at the studio and then I'll buy this one for when, I, when I'm somewhere else. Um, don't do that. Uh, uh, get yourself a better tripod. Um, okay moving on to number two. Well. I'm not going to say it yet. I'm not going to say it yet because I also I want to take a second, a moment um, to talk about our latest affiliate, uh, Books A Million. If you don't know, Crystal Ignition LLC is officially partnered with Books A Million. Um, we are affiliate partner. Um, when I got the call, man, I was so excited. Um, Books A Million. Uh, I shop there all the time. I'm an avid reader. I love them. So um, if you read last month's blog post, uh, we're going to be doing a book of the month and um, you're going to see it when you read it it's three days from now on the 18th but this month i actually picked a series um, i guess officially I, i'm going to recommend the first book but really i think that everyone needs to read all of these books um, it's a manga called pompo the cenophile and you probably might have seen the trailer for the actual movie and i brought it with me i brought the movie um, I have not looked at it yet because I wanted to read all three books and I've brought two of the books. So I've got number one and number two. Unfortunately, number three is not here. Um, I ordered it, it has not arrived yet. So unfortunately, I couldn't give you like a comprehensive review of all three books. But from what I've read so far, this is just amazing, phenomenal. Um, it takes place in the fictional world of Nollywood. <laughs> and Pompo is this producer. Um, she's got Jean, her assistant, who wants to be a filmmaker. Um, and I mean, there's just something to love about every single character. Um, they give like actual, like practical advice, like the things that they talk about. I think that filmmakers, especially new filmmakers, really need to hear this. Like, it's just, I love it. This was made with a lot of love. Somebody that likes movies and <laughs> I love movies. That's what we're here about here at Crystal Ignition. So check out Pompo the Cenophile. And I'm gonna put links um, to the, the Books A Million page so that you can purchase that. Um, you'll help the studio and you'll also get yourself a really good book series. There's only three of them. So I recommend that you read all of them. Okay, so getting back to the video so we can finish up. Um, moving on to number two. Um, number two is going to be a motorized slider okay so um we purchased a motorized slider here at crystal ignition and personally it just does not really work out that well when you're on set um for example if you have like an app um when you're sitting there and you're trying to like calibrate it so that it'll go the right speed uh to get the type of shot that you want uh, you're wasting time and on set time is money so I recommend that you get a actual like manual slider, um, one that you're using manually. Um, it's cheaper and personally I think it's going to serve indie filmmakers more. Um, like I said earlier with the tripod, we talk about versatility. Um, that's why you're gonna wanna want a manual slider. Um, do not go out and purchase a uh, electronic slider, uh, especially if you're a new filmmaker, that's kind of more for like indie film uh, like studio type setups um, where you have like you know on camera like television you know uh, type thing maybe if you're like a live streamer and you want you know a man like a, a electronic slider will be good for that but manual if you're doing anything like short films uh, feature indie films manual slider okay 
So, number one on my list. Oh boy. <laughs> number one on my list is going to be uh, the in-ear monitor system that I purchased uh, from eBay. Uh, now, the reason why I purchased this thing when I first saw it was the technical specs. Uh, it was a lot cheaper, and I had been talking to another location sound mixer, um, and he was talking about uh, his system, which I'm actually going to recommend, but not yet. Um, and I compared the specs of both of them, and I said, well, this is basically the same product. What he was using was for guitarists and like musicians. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but he was like, yeah, sounds great. I hook it up. Uh, directors use it. The producers use it. Um, everyone gets their little in-ear monitor. Um, he had his little cheap headphones. Uh, so that way, if the producer brings his family, uh, you know, his son can get a pair of headphones and he can listen to the actors um, say their lines. So I was like, okay, that actually sounds really useful. I'm going to pick one of these up. Got it in the mail. Uh, there's like this high-pitched whine. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe if that's just on my model. Uh, maybe it's my headphones. I have no idea. This thing was hooked up to our super expensive uh, Zoom F6 recorder and it sounded awful. So I do not recommend it. Instead, I recommend the Vocal Pro um, Silent PA system. Put some headphones in it, hook it up to a recorder, and um, your sound mixer can give you some headphones and you'll be able to listen in and hear whatever's going on on set. Um, Alright guys, um, so yeah, uh, hopefully you, you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, like, share, subscribe. Um, we'll be back again on the 30th um, with another filmmaking video. Um, you can also catch us on Twitch. I'll be streaming um, tomorrow, 7.30 to 8.30 and then I'll be back again Thursday uh, 7.30 to 8.30. So, yeah, thanks for watching the video. I um, hope you have a good day or night wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out.